Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I got a fun little adventure we're gonna go on today. Um, I was browsing around my Facebook profile a couple days ago and on one of my Waco history pages, I learned about the story of one of Waco's founders. Uh, his name was, and I gotta read this because you're not gonna believe this, but you'll understand why I'm reading it in a second. His name was Telephus Telemachus Luis Augustus Albertus Johnson. Uh, from now on, I'm just gonna call him Johnson. But yeah, he had kind of an interesting history and uh, kind of an interesting end too. So we're gonna go down and visit downtown Waco and we're gonna visit a couple cemeteries and we're gonna learn the story of Johnson. This is gonna be fun. Now Johnson was born in 1822, didn't have much of an education, in fact only had about an elementary school education. When he was in his early 20s, he met his future wife, Mary Louisa, and they basically had a whirlwind romance and eloped in 1844. In 1852, they moved here to Waco and, uh, and Johnson built his wife Mary a house on this location. Now, when I was researching this, I realized that I'd heard of a street called Mary Avenue, and which was allegedly named for Mary. And uh, I knew I'd heard of it and had been there somewhere, somewhere recently, but wasn't exactly sure where it was. And I went into Google Maps and looked it up and saw this building that said simply Mac on it. Said, I know exactly where I am. I was here just last week because this building here is where Spice Village is. And so that was kind of interesting because, oh, okay, yeah, I know exactly where I am. This is Second Avenue and Mary Street. And as you can see right there, this street is uh, Mary Avenue is named for Johnson's wife, Mary. So they, he built her a house at this location. And the house kind of became kind of famous because it was famous around all of central Texas because it had very beautiful, colorful shingles. It was one of the first concrete houses and it also was a house that had a basement, which was really unusual in this area. Now Johnson kind of quickly became very, one, of wealth, one of the wealthiest people in Waco and uh, before too long purchased about 760 acres of property along the Brazos River. The Brazos River is literally just over there. And he had uh, got a lot of influence very, very quickly. And at one point was involved in the selection process for the location of the new courthouse. Turns out there was two factions. Johnson was one of the factions and he wanted it to be built on this next block over because it was very, very close to his house. But there was another faction that wanted the new courthouse, which was gonna replace an old log cabin where, uh, courthouse that it existed before that, they wanted it in a place called Courtyard Square. And one of the attractive features that drew all the people to this other location was that there was a beautiful grove of trees in the area. And that was what made everyone say, yeah, this is where our courthouse should be. Well, as it turns out, uh, it looked like the, the uh, people who wanted it around the tree groves uh, were about to win. When all of a sudden, one morning, Wacoans woke up to discover somebody had cut down all of the trees uh, at the other uh, location and Johnson ended up winning. Courthouse was put here and in fact the city the city hall is still at this location. This is uh, Second Street and Franklin here and that's the courthouse. Uh, that's the current city hall and the original location of the new courthouse which Johnson helped uh, select. Now Johnson lived in the early to mid 1800s and as you know people didn't live very long at that point and Johnson was no exception. He died at the age of 52 but that's not where the story ends. All right we are at the location of the First Street Cemetery. I've visited this place a number of times. Uh, it's also right over here by the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum. I visited that also, but we've wandered through this cemetery a bunch of times, but turns out we're looking for a particular grave marker or a particular mausoleum, and I believe it's that one over there. Let's go over and take a look. 
Yep, this is it. This is the original burial place of Johnson. This is where he was buried when he died in 1875. Now, this crypt used to be open up in this front section, and many years after he was removed and moved to the Oakwood Cemetery, and we're gonna go over and visit that in a little bit, this uh, kind of was starting to fall apart, and uh, the city kind of came in and restored it. Now, they didn't want to make it look brand new because these are all authentic period bricks from the late 1870s. So they wanted it to look old and continue to look like what it had originally been, but the, it, it was also like on the verge of collapsing. The, uh, the roof had uh, caved in on the top and the front section was bricked over. Like I said, it used to be open in the front here. And allegedly, according to the story, this would be a very popular place for local kids to come and make out. And there were also a number of drug deals that were taking place in here. So they removed, uh, or they closed this all off and kind of restored it in the 60s when they were uh, kind of trying to retake this cemetery. The cemetery had kind of fallen into disrepair and I mean, a lot of it still is in a is in pretty bad shape. And when they started building the uh, Fort Fisher Park, which is over there, which is where the uh, Texas Ranger Museum is, they did a little bit of beautification and removed some of the weeds and and the overgrowth in the area. And at that point, this area was uh, this uh, mausoleum was closed off. But like I said, a couple years after Johnson was buried. They moved him to the Oakwood Cemetery because that cemetery was thought to be in better shape. It, was, it had just opened up, it was brand new, and it was thought to be better maintained. But even that isn't the most interesting part of the story. Let's go over to Oakwood and I'll tell you the rest of this. All right, so here we are at the Oakwood Cemetery. We've been here a bunch of times too. Uh, this cemetery, like I said, uh, was established in 1878, just a couple years after um, Johnson passed away and uh, like I said we've visited several other uh, graves of famous Wacoans in this uh, in this cemetery but today we are gonna look for the final resting place of Johnson I've already actually been there I know where it is it's just over there let's take a look and here we are at the final resting place of Johnson as I said before, he was originally buried over in First Street Cemetery, but First Street Cemetery, even in the 1800s, was starting to get kind of ratty looking. So the decision was to move him about three years later over to here, where, because this cemetery had just been opened up and they put, it in, put him in this nice new marble uh, sarcophagus. And he's been here ever since. Now, the interesting part of this uh, was that he wasn't just buried in a typical coffin laying down. No, they buried him in a seated position at a table with a deck of cards in front of him and a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a six-shooter in the other hand. Yeah, that's the part of the story that caught my attention on this when I was reading this on the Facebook page. And I said, I got to look this guy up. Uh, apparently he had quite a sense of humor and uh, this is his final resting place. I guess they shortened the name a little bit too. Probably ran out of room or maybe they had to pay by the letter or something like that. It's just uh, Telephus A. Johnson here. But now you know his whole name and know a little bit of his story. Now I also did a little research to try and figure out where Mary ended up. Mary, as you recall, was his wife. And turns out that she lived for many, many years after, after uh, Johnson passed away and in fact remarried. And when she was buried, she was buried uh, in another cemetery, probably about a hundred miles here from here, uh, a little bit east of uh, Dallas and Fort Worth. So. Not going to visit her today, but as you can see, there's actually a few more uh, Johnsons in the in this uh, family uh, crypt. I'm not sure who any of these people are. Uh, kind of the, the the birth and death dates kind of imply they probably knew each other. 1842 born here, 1822 for Telephus Johnson, uh, and mother. I don't know who mother is. But uh, 1842 also, I don't know if maybe if that's the same 
yeah that might these might actually be the same same Johnsons here unless two Johnsons uh, both died and yeah, born and died in the same year I suppose that's possible Let's see is there a name on this one other than just mother nope see I'm guessing I'm guessing what's happening here because you look at the back of this one this one's a uh, John D Johnson and in the front is Matilda Margaret Johnson so yeah see this was a this is a grave for for the wife and the husband is in the back and I'm guessing this is probably the stone for actually where where uh, Matilda is buried so there you go kind of a common marker there we got a Minerva Johnson 1872 to 1959 and a Robert Lloyd Johnson, 1866 to 1930. So, seems like the whole family is right here. Another Confederate soldier, it appears. Johnson born July 11th, 1800. Died December 15th, 1881. Confederate soldier. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about the history of, uh, of this individual, of Telfus A. Johnson, you know, one of the, definitely one of the founders of the city of Waco. He had kind of an interesting life and definitely an interesting death. So I think that's all that I have today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.